Hello YouTube, I'm going to be reading A New Concept of the Universe, written by Walter Russell. The Nine Octave Periodic Table of the Elements. 98. The periodic table of today lists 92 elements, including isotopes and inert gases. Many listed as elements are isotopes which are divided fractional elements. My periodic table lists 63 elements, 49 isotopes, and 9 inert gases, making a total of 121. From nature's point of view, there is but one element, carbon, and but one form, the cube sphere. Carbon crystallizes in the form of its wave field, which is a true cube. The nucleus of its system is a true sphere. The plane of its system is 90 degrees from its wave axes, 90 degrees from its pole of rotation, and 90 degrees from the axes of its north-south poles. The shape of the carbon atomic system is a disk. The orbit of every planet of the carbon system is on the plane of the carbon equator and that equator is on the plane of the wave amplitude. Carbon thus manifests balanced form and body and unity and balanced sex mating. It has but one equator. All elements which are not on wave amplitudes are disunited pairs which are divided by three equators. Each single element is divided in itself by its own equator and each pair is divided by the wave amplitude equator. 99. Carbon symbolizes the marriage idea in nature. In one equator is the bond of its unity. It is no longer a pair, and that is what marriage in nature means, and what it should mean in man's mating practices. Divided pairs have opposed attributes. The negatives of pairs are metallic acids. The positives are metallic alkalis. All are conductive, for conductivity is a search for balance. Balance unity voids acidity, alkalinity, metallic quality, and conductivity. By eliminating these qualities, carbon becomes a salt, which means a mineral with the qualities of stone. When disunited equal and opposite pairs marry, each as such as sodium and chlorine, they likewise have but one equator instead of three the instant they unite as sodium chloride. They likewise lose their metallic, acid, alkaline, and conductive qualities and crystallize as true cubes. An example of unbalanced mating in nature is that of a marriage of sodium and iodine, or sodium, or bromine. Each of these marriages uh, has stability, but there is a residue of unbalance in each of them, which is evidenced in distorted cube crystals. Each of them would likewise continue as a harmonious marriage unless chlorine appeared, in which case nature would immediately annul the marriage in favor of chlorine. 100. Carbon has the highest melting point and greatest density of all the elements. This means that carbon is also the most enduring of all elements because of having accumulated more time cycles. It likewise means that carbon is the least radioactive of all elements because radioactivity only begins to express itself by outward explosions at wave amplitude, although it, is, although it is strongest at the reversal point where regenerativity and radioactivity meet. It is from nature's point of view that we will very briefly describe the nine octave cycle of the elements, with the hope of unifying man's point of view with that of nature. 101. The one supreme outstanding characteristic of this electric universe of two-way balanced effects of motion 
is the cyclical unfolding of matured body forms to manifest mind idea and their refolding into the source of all idea. Bodies of matured forms are unfolded by a series of four efforts in positive-negative pairs. Likewise, they are refolded by a reverse series of four efforts in similarly mated pairs. 102. Each effort in nature to unfold and refold is a stage of inward-outward growth towards the formation of a matured polarized body and away from it towards its seed idea. The fourth positive-negative pair of every octave is united as one. They unite as one at their wave amplitude, which in every wave points towards or directly towards the center of gravity. These two united efforts constitute the matured body form of conceived idea. They are the meeting points of life and death, the reversal points of rest which divide regeneration and radiation. At that meeting point is the greatest density, highest melting point, and the highest potential of the entire cycle. In that united pair is the matured body of the one element, carbon. Every completed idea in nature is expressed in nine efforts, or stages, which are eight octave waves plus the matured centering amplitude wave of the whole nine octave cycle. 103. Each octave of the elements grows from its inert gas just as a tree grows from its seed. The, the inert gases record and store for repetition all that has gone before in that octave. 104. In the Mendeleev gra uh, table of the elements, hydrogen is shown without an inert gas. This is as impossible as producing a child without parents. Hydrogen is also shown as being the only element in a whole octave that is also an impos as impossible as charging only one of the two cells of a battery. 105. <coughs> Hydrogen is not one element, but eight. It is a whole octave in itself, but nature has not made it possible for the senses of man to detect this easily. When I explained this fact many years ago to science, it went into research and found other tones of this octave, which mistakenly called isotopes. What science found were full tones, not isotopes. Science had numbered the elements from 1 to 92. However, on the presumption that there were no others and had, to, and had no alternative but to call them isotopes. 106. In the Mendeleev table, series 5, 7, 10, 11, and 12 are shown without inert gases and without being full octaves. These series are also partially filled with isotopes, which do not belong in the groups in which they are placed. Also, a group numbered 8 consists of 9 isotopes to which full numbers have been given. In fact, all isotopes are numbered as though they were full tones. 107. Isotopes, I, er, isotopes do not appear in nature until the sixth octave, and then only between three and four positive, and four and three negative. They increase in numbers in the succeeding older octaves, because the aging carbon is unable to reach the true sphere in either of them. Its many attempts to do so result in producing many isotopes. Like the fully matured strongman who keeps his vitality for a long period of time, carbon rises again to amplitude at silicone as a non-metal, but from there on the gradual radioactive decline makes it impossible for another balanced non-metal to appear at wave amplitude. 108. The fifth octave is the balancing one of the nine, which nature demands in all her expressions. That is the octave of matured vitality. The full four older octaves are fully evident to our senses because they have accumulated density by accumulating time cycles. 
The four younger octaves are beyond our sense range with the exception of hydrogen, which has been listed as only one of that octave. These exist in nature, for nature is balanced. It must have the four younger octaves to counterbalance the older ones. As I have heretofore said, one can know many things which he cannot sense. One can, therefore, know that balance in nature's polarization principle demands equally of division in all of her paired effects. It is not just necessary to know this fact, however, to be convinced of its truth, for it can be proven by reading the history of the elements from their beginning spectrum lines. The red lines in the spectrum of hydrogen do not belong to one octave alone. Each red line tells of another invisible octave. Spectrum lines should be read as accumulated time in history, not as though all the lines of any reading belong to one element of one octave. 109. The reason for the intervals between those red lines in the spectrum is not because they represent the pressures of one element, but because each sequential octave increases in density, which also retards time sequences. The reverse of this principle applies in depolarizing bodies. Depolarizing bodies on the radioactive half of any cycle project time accumulations from them at tremendous speeds. Helium and other inert gases explode outwardly from tungsten at approximately half the speed of light, while similar rays explode outwardly from radium, actinium, thorium, uranium, and iridium at almost the speed of light. Conversely, regenerative rays explode inwardly at tremendous speeds in the first three invisible octaves, alpha, beta, gamma, and cosmic rays explode inwardly to center invisible generating matter as they and the older inert gases explode outwardly from degenerating visible matter. The nine inert gases, which form the seed patterns of unfolding matter, mystify observers who do not comprehend their action or, or their purpose. The refusal of inert gases to combine with elements has always been an insoluble mystery, insoluble mystery. <coughs> After scandium in the sixth octave and arsenic in the seventh octave, five separate efforts are needed to produce cobalt. Carbon is still tremendously strong of body in its cobalt stage, but cobalt is not a true sphere nor is its wave field a true cube. For this reason, cobalt is metallic, and so are the carbon prototypes in the rhodium and the lutetium octaves. Naturally, such isotopes as cerium, thorium, tungsten, and many others also show their direct relationship to hydrogen in many ways, such as inflammability. Carbon itself gives much evidence of its identity with hydrogen. Every chemist knows that carbon is the basis of all organic and, in and inorganic matter, and that hydrocarbon compounds are more numerous in nature than any other combination. Flesh leaves a residue of carbon when acted upon by acids. Carbon is the basis of all vegetable growth as well as animal as evidenced in the earth's coal deposits and the charcoal of the burnt wood. Likewise, hydrocarbons will not react to acids or alkalis because acids and alkalis are voided in the element when they find the perfect balance of gravity in the true cube wave field. Carbon is the only element which completely measures up to that requirement. Hydrogen so nearly measures up to it that it is immunized from reaction by acids or alkalis when in combination with carbon. These facts are cited in order that the metallurgist and chemist will base their thinking upon the growth decay and life death principle of matter rather than an idea of many separate substances. By dividing the entire nine octave cycle into its two opposite half cycles, 
one half being uh, generative and the other half being equally radioactive, a comprehensive base for transmutation will replace the present concept of dislodging electrons or adding to them to transmute one into another. The age of transmutation will come only through the transformation of man, and man's transformation can only come by the renewing of his mind through no through new knowing. It has never been that way since it has ever been that way since the consciousness dawn, and it will ever be. Whenever new knowledge of transforming nature premeditates the race, the standard of world culture rises. The art of the Italian Renaissance transformed mankind from seven centuries of dark ages. The new knowledge of natural law is slowly driving superstition out of man. Spiritual knowledge has transformed mankind step by step from his jungle age. Scientific revelations have also transformed man step by step since early thinking thinkers rediscovered that the earth was round after having forgotten it for over 10 centuries. Man thinks differently of each transformation from new knowing, whether religious, philosophical, scientific, or artistical. Another kind of man emerges, emerges from new standards of thinking.